LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. T minus fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Go Falcon. Go hunting. ISPE. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Nominal first stage chamber pressure. Plus 40 seconds into flight, successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy nominal. Space Center. We're carrying the XB satellite into an equatorial orbit, and we just throttled down the nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for the next event. That's the point of max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. That coming up in about 10 seconds. Vehicle is supersonic. So with that, we are through the highest stresses on the vehicle from the combination of our increasing velocity and the decreasing atmospheric density. Coming up next, the next event in about a minute will be MECO, that's main engine cutoff. We'll shut down those nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for the next event, stage separation. The first and second stages will separate. And then at about T plus two minutes, 44 seconds, We'll have SES-1, or second engine start number one. That's where the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to carry the second stage and the XB payload into orbit. So again, those three events coming up in succession, MECO, main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1. And this view, looking down on the Merlin 1D engines from the first stage, you can see the plume expanding as the atmospheric density drops off, as we get higher and higher in our atmosphere. First stage engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Ignition. So those three events successful, main engine cutoff, stage separation, left hand side of your screen, you can see a view of the first stage deploying its grid fins, starting its recovery sequence. The second stage on the right hand side of your screen, we've got a shot of the Merlin vacuum engine glowing uh, as it continues its ignition to carry XB into orbit. Next major event coming up will be fairing deployment. At this point, the second stage stage two on nominal trajectory the second stage uh, is getting to a part of the atmosphere with very low density so we don't need to carry those fairing halves anymore we can jettison them back to planet earth and then attempt to recover them again both of them being new fairing halves flying for this mission fairing separation confirmed there's confirmation of the fairing deploy, the XB satellite now getting directly exposed to the vacuum of space. And those fairing halves again will be attempting to recover those with our recovery vessel named Bob 
which is out in the Atlantic Ocean. So if you're just joining us, welcome. We're about T plus four and a half, uh, excuse me, four minutes and 20 seconds into today's mission. I could just send a signal for me to. On your screen is a view of the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. It's uh, completing its first of two planned burns to take the Ixby satellite into an initial parking orbit. We had an on-time liftoff at 1 a.m. Eastern time. The first stage that carried the second stage uh, this far separated and is on its way back to planet Earth. Its next major activity will happen at about T plus six minutes and 20 seconds. And that'll be for the entry burn where it'll ignite a few of its engines to slow down in preparation for entering the Earth's atmosphere. Now during the entry burn, we'll relight three of the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. That'll start with the center engine followed shortly after by uh, two of the side engines. That'll slow down the vehicle as we pass back into Earth's atmosphere. And we need to slow down on the first stage to reduce the entry forces, which helps us recover and reuse that first stage. Reusability is a key part stage two on nominal trajectory. of lowering the cost of space flight, which enables more investment into the critical scientific hardware and research. Now, Falcon 9's first stage that supported today's mission will perform this entry burn for the fifth time, having previously done so for the Crew-1, Crew-2, Sirius XM-8, and Sirius 23 missions. And those brand new fairing halves will also re-enter Earth's atmosphere for the first time. The second stage continuing to burn, its burn will continue until about T plus eight minutes. And we've heard periodic call-outs that we are seeing nominal performance and following a nominal trajectory. Stage one FTS is saved. On the second stage. Stage one entry burn startup. So left-hand side of your screen, you can see the grid fins and you can see the plume from the entry burn. At this point, we are firing three of the Merlin 1D engines. And uh, we're decelerating the first stage, but we're still going pretty fast. So as we're flying into the Earth's atmosphere, that soot is actually getting kicked back. Excuse me, the plume is getting kicked back. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. Onto the first stage. And the plume uh, does is carbon-based, so that'll deposit a nice layer of soot on the first stage's surface. Stage two on nominal trajectory. Nominal shutdown of the entry burn. The next activity for the first stage will be the landing burn that'll happen at about T plus eight minutes and 10 seconds. Second stage continuing to look nominal. Now the engines on both the first and second stage are different. The Merlin engines no on the first stage are optimized for sea level thrust, but the Merlin vacuum engine that you see on your screen is optimized for vacuum. And the difference there is how much we can expand Stage the pressurized two, is saved. gases that are being produced by the Merlin Stage engine. One, transonic. Call out there for stage one being transonic. So it's transitioning from supersonic speeds back to subsonic speed. And next events coming up will be second engine cutoff number one that's shut down of this Merlin vacuum engine. And uh, pretty close after we'll hear a call out for landing burn startup on the first stage. Stage one, landing burn. And back engine cutoff. So shutdown of the Merlin vacuum engine. We've got landing burn startup on the first stage. Left-hand side of your screen is a shot from the drone ship. Nominal Stage orbit one, landing leg deploy. And correction, that's a shot from the first stage. And on the right-hand side is a shot from the drone ship. We've deployed the landing legs, hopefully for a soft touchdown on just read the instructions. Stage one, landing confirmed. And that, that is a 97th successful recovery of a first stage on our drone ship named just read the instructions. This particular first stage uh, having scored five flights under its belt.
Now the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage on your screen is now embarking on its first coast phase and it's in its nominal orbit. So after this coast phase, we'll light the Merlin vacuum engine for a second time around T plus 29 minutes to put it into the final circular orbit for payload deployment. We'll see you back here in about 20 minutes, but in the meantime, enjoy the space jams and the views of the stages. And back startup. So there's ignition of the second stage engine. This burn was expected to last about 40 seconds. Now the initial orbit that the first stage, uh, excuse me, the second stage went into, put it at about a 28 degree inclination um, with a high apogee and a fairly low perigee. This burn is taking us down to zero inclination. That means we'll be flying over the equator and it'll put us into a circular 600 by 600 kilometer orbit. And you're looking at live views of the Merlin vacuum engine and some uh, photobombs from planet Earth behind it. Terminal guidance. Nominal MVAC cutoff. From planet Earth. And payload separation confirmed. So there's confirmation of payload separation. The XB satellite floating away from Falcon 9's second stage to begin its two year mission to study some of the most energetic objects in the cosmos. And with that, it's uh, going to end our webcast coverage for today. So we want to give a big thanks to NASA for entrusting us with today's mission, SpaceX's fifth NASA science mission to date and the second in the last couple of weeks. We also want to give a big thanks to the range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And of course, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again for the next launch.